I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. You're about to hear a holiday special for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for one. Hamish Linklater wrote it for us not long ago. Hamish is both playwright of and actor in Thanksgiving for One. He did the same in another commission for playing on air, his Nudity Rider. Listen to it also on our podcast or website. Many of you will recognize Hamish from TV's Legion, Tell Me Your Secrets, The Crazy Ones, Film Spotlight, and Broadway's Seminar. He's joined today by the extraordinary multi-Emmy Award winner Gene Smart, known for Hacks, Mayor of Easttown, Watchmen, Fargo, and Frasier. Linklater and Smart are directed by Lortel and Tony Award winner Ruben Santiago Hudson, whose credits as director include Paradise Blue and The Piano Lesson. And now, Thanksgiving for One. We're at Ruth's Chris Steakhouse on Thanksgiving Day... 2020. Oh, hello. I've written you this little radio play. It's called Thanksgiving for One, and it concerns Marjorie Mum's first Thanksgiving since the death of her husband, Hugh. Her only daughter, May, is stuck with her family in a state from which it's hard to travel, and since Marjorie lives in a state where indoor dining is in play, May has made her mother a reservation at Marjorie's local Ruth's Chris Steakhouse as a nudge, a uh, consolation, a uh, please get out of the house and live gesture. Don't worry, this little radio play won't be too sad, at least not by today's standards. Oh, Marjorie's being seated at her table now. I'd better hurry. I'll be playing her waiter, Keith Saturday. Hello, my name is Keith Saturday, and I will be playing, I will be your waiter this evening. Will anyone be joining you, Mrs. Mums? Ms. Mums. Ms. Mums, yes. <laughs> my condolences, our condolences, condolences of the house. My daughter has overshared. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. She merely said to take the very best of care. It will just be me tonight. Just you then. Thanksgiving for one. Would you like to start with a glass of champagne? No? Uh, something stronger, maybe. How about a spritz? G&T. G&T to a T. Beefeater, Bombay, Boodles? Tanqueray. Terrific. And for tonic, chef prefers Schweppes. Fine. As you can see from the menu... Uh, the options are limited. Yes, <laughs> chef is offering the Thanksgiving special. Um, bird and trimmings. Traditional, but with a farm-to-table fundamentum. Or the vegetarian, double the trimmings? A uh, larger portion of the trimmings. And chef's own interrogation, re enervation of the vegerky. It's a maceration of tubers, dust-dry legumes, essence of wet Oaxacan night soil. This is a Ruth's... Chris. Y- yes. Uh, guess what? We poach chef from a sister franchise in Richmond, CA. That's near Marin. For holiday menus, chef insists on carte blanche, but nothing a la carte, Cal Surprise. I'll take the bird. Wonderful. Chef portions for two, but I will ask if he will make an exception. He will make an exception, unless you'd like two servings for yourself. I'll have him have it. <laughs> I will insist. Inquire. Tanqueray and tea time coming right up. Bread? No. Water? Sure. Bubbles? Tap. Fabu. Drink water, bread. Check, check, check. Oh, and I almost forgot. Would you prefer the breast or leg? Excuse me? Would you prefer the breast or leg? White meat. Breast, then? Yes. 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 Breast? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would like white meat. (sighs) Chef, you see, would prefer you say breast. Not white meat? Yes, breast. And if you don't mind, I think chef feels... Yes? Meat is implied. (sighs) Chef doesn't want me to say meat. Just breast, if you would. Chef wants me to say it. Yes, if you would. As opposed to white meat? What if I wanted uh, dark meat? Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> last year, of course, uh, Chef preferred a less anatomical, more tinted nomenclature for the menu. But this season... This season? I don't know what you mean. 
Chef used to be a feminist, but now. No, uh, Chef is a staunch feminist. I see you're not familiar with Chef's wave. What if I wanted a drumstick? I think that would be. But I don't. I, I, I want white meat. Yeah, Chef would prefer you say. I don't like saying that. It's a generational issue. Okay. Or political. Are you asking if I'm Republican because I know how to order turkey from one season to the next? I also suggested it might be because of your age. Okay. Um, I'm going to pretend to receive a phone call now. I'll pretend the caller's name is Barbara. <clears throat> oh, hello, Barbara. <clears throat> you won't believe how stupid my waiter is. Yes, I'm at the Thanksgiving for one. It's also the title of a little radio play the waiter has written. Is writing for you. No, no, I don't think he's an actual writer. He's too convincing as a waiter. Actually, I'm more of an actor by trade. Between jobs? Working on my reel. I've got a job for you. You know my work? You can get me some white meat. No, Barbara, you would not believe the political sloppicisms he has me saying in this thing. Public radio, probably the local affiliate. Oh, look, it's the choir. Preach. Probably a podcast, too. Oh, you're right. That's hilarious. I think he's cast me as some Thanksgiving Scrooge, and I'm a new widow. I know. Oh, that's a good way to find out. Son, do you hate your country? Currently? Confirmed. Okay, I'll call you back. Let me look at your wine list. Wine list? <sighs> wine list. Yeah, we haven't got one. That's okay. What shade of wine does Chef say pairs best with Thanksgiving for one? We have a nice rosé. To heck with it. Get my jam and point me to the ladies. It's out of service, I'm afraid, but perhaps I might suggest next door. Are you trying to have me leave? The hotel bar at the Doubletree has wonderful facilities. Rather than serve Thanksgiving for one... The plumbing reversed at lunch and the infelicitous insulata misto led to a rent on the stalls. Wait, wait, where are you going? The, the bagno's out of order. I'm going to improvise. Imp improvisation? No! <sighs> Okay, this is, this is not the little radio play I wrote for you. I did not write the words that I'm speaking right now. I'm going off script now to, uh, just to I don't know, apologize for the character, the utterances of Marjorie Mum. She has the dialogue right in front of her, but for whatever reason... Do, uh, hey, ma'am, ma'am, that is a plant. You cannot use that potted palm. I don't believe the misto story. I'm sure the stalls are sparkling, but just to be difficult, I'm going to use this potted plant oh as a gosh. port of pot instead. Oh it's okay. God. There's napkins everywhere. Hey, please, rebutton your pantsuit, madame. It's patron. Hey, please, sit down. She isn't about to... What's your beef? Look at the menu. Chef has no problem with things getting anatomical. Madam, sirs, please return to your banquets. I haven't even tempted you with dessert. It's a budino. False alarm. Turns out I didn't have to go. What? Fish. Call a fake out a fake out. I needed to clear the room. Mrs. Mums, you look flushed. Ms. Mums. That's why I cleared the room. I'm not, I'm not a fan of a public weep. Oh, Ms. Mums, you mustn't be shy. Everyone's feeling so full these days, so fraught, so flush with full fraught feeling. Are you trying to let me in with the common moment? To justify my spleen? Is that the little radio play you wish you were writing? Oh, my God. Yes, please. Do you, do you think you could pull that off at this late date and page count? Fine, then. Ask your listeners to YouTube mating turkeys. YouTube? I'm a grandma. It's where I live. Well, what if they're driving or on a treadmill? Then I'll luridly describe the act. The male turkey, or gobbler, when he mates with the female turkey, or hen, in these YouTube videos, it, it's like a savage dance. The preening, pecking, the broken feathers, the gobbler's wattle glistening red. Can you say wattle on the radio? Turkey jowl, glistening red, engorged. Until the hen, submitting, digs a shallow hole in the dirt in which she lays face down. She folds her wings over her back, and the gobbler hops on her, standing, surfing her, till he's pinned her down, got his balance, and then... God, the animal kingdom is such a disappointment, progressively speaking. My dead husband, Hugh. He was my gobbler. 
Our whole marriage, he pinned me, made me eat dirt, teased me when I tried to order the healthier portion. Oh, like that'll help. (laughs) Insisted dark meat was tastier. Maybe it is. Doesn't mean I can't order my own food without comment. Always ordering for me. G&T for me and for the Lady Chardonnay, the Sauv Blanc, the Lady Gargles White. When we couldn't have a child, traditionally, like turkeys do. And I insisted we find our May by any means, even if she didn't end up looking like our cut of meat. Why couldn't he wrap his head around how ignorant it was to introduce her? And this is my adopted daughter. Can you see the resemblance? Was that generational? Was it his fault? Maybe not at first, but when he didn't fix it? You know what it's like being the kind of racist grandparents at holidays? That's who I was, by association, perpetuation. So you can tell Chef from me that I agree with him, that white men, the white race, has been an unmitigated abomination, a white state of pillage on the planet. Broad strokes, perhaps? There's strong arguments to be made. Well, here we are, observing the holiday of indigenous genocide, for God's sakes. Every one of this country's holidays is sponge-soaked in coagulate capitalist confectionation, Cadbury Easters, and diabetic Valentines. I say topple the statues, release the Macy's Day floats. Not that I hate Thanksgiving. Giving thanks is a gesture of wildly un-American humility. And maybe this holiday, like the Republic, began in vivid sin and wickedness, but that doesn't mean we aren't grown up and fed up. Enough now to finally fix it, to seek forgiveness, offer restitution, make our traditions and institutions better. I am so grateful for my daughter and my grandchildren and my friends and my strangers. And I'm on a holiday for that. Gratefulness giving day, or is that? Stupid. But then today, after Hughes finally died, and I finally get to go out to Thanksgiving for one and order for myself... Chef, who I'd wager is a little racially abominable himself, insists that I mammarize my order. What if I simply don't want the word breast in my mouth? I am not an infant. What if Hugh died of breast cancer? Did he? No, heart attack. All that dark maiden gin. Mrs. Mums. Ms. Mums. Mums is not my married name. Mrs. Mums was my mother, who incidentally did have breast cancer. Oh, God. And beat it. Oh, yay. Died in her sleep. Terrific. Behind the wheel of her speeding Buick. Gosh darn it. My maiden name is Mums. My married name was White. White? White. When I was married, I was Mrs. White. Your husband's name? Was Hugh White. I see. Which is maybe why today, on this day of Thanksgiving, I want to order loud and proud a steaming, high-piled plate of... You want to eat some white meat? I want to chew it up and swallow it down. A repast of the past, an order of newly carved up turkey. And you know what? I'll take both servings. I'm suddenly famished. Is, Is this more what you had in mind when you set out to write your little radio play? Maybe, Ms. Mums. You can call me Marjorie. Ring, ring. What's that? I think it's your phone. I I think you just said ring, ring. Ring, ring. Just answer it. Well, you're right. It's my daughter. How'd you know? (laughs) I'm not just a waiter. I'm also a hyphenate. Hello? Hey, sweetheart. (laughs) I just finished ordering. How'd your turkey come out? The kids behaving? The game's on. What do you mean you have no idea Philip's got the kids? What do you mean it was too complicated to bring bring all of them? Come to the what? The window? What what window? She's saying, she's saying, come look out the window of the Ruth's Chris... Oh my gosh. 
What's happening out the window? This is an oral medium, so any description. My daughter May is standing in your parking lot right now, waving at me. Were you in on this? <laughs> I made a promise to my listeners. Actually, no, you guys have kind of done whatever you wanted. Sweetheart, what are you doing here? How did you get here? You shouldn't have left your family. I, I, I'm fine. I, okay, 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 I'll shut up. What's, what's she saying? She's telling me to shut up and just say, and just say thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for figuring out today. These kids. Now hang up. Time to come in. Come in. You must be hungry. Hurry. It takes them forever to take your order here. And as May enters and she and her mother squeeze their hellos, we would like to extend to you and your families and your friends and the strangers you haven't yet met across regional, generational, and yea, even political borders, all those for whom you are also grateful and with whom you wish the same blessing before this meal of grace. We wish for everyone a very happy holiday of reunion and much thanks from me your author, waiter, actor, and from your local public radio affiliate and podcast. You just heard Thanksgiving for One, a world premiere by Hamish Linklater, commissioned by Fred Wistow. Thanks, Fred. It was directed by Ruben Santiago Hudson and featured Jean Smart as Marjorie Mums and the playwright Hamish Linklater as Keith Saturday. Hi, everybody. Okay, director, Ruben Santiago Hudson. I'm taking your order. Breasts or leg? <laughs> <laughs> I like a little bit of both. <laughs> All right. Jean Smart, white or dark? Uh, dark. Okay, and Hamish, <laughs> today's playwright and actor, what do you have? I take the whole bird. Thanks very much. <laughs> now that we have that settled. Hamish, this is your second commission from us, and both the first nudity rider and this one feature not only Keith Saturday, but food, food, food. What place does food have in your life? And how is it that Keith Saturday keeps popping up in your plays? Well, you told me you wanted to have him back. You liked him from the first one, and so I just did it for you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I like that name uh -huh. a lot, so it makes me happy to write it. And actually, he's a character that my grandfather wrote a book called Poets Pub, and the guy who ran it was a, was a terrible poet who became a pub runner, and uh, so that's where I stole the name from. That was um, his name? Oh, I love that. Keith Saturday, yeah. And then the reason I write about food so much is because... I'm a actor who has to diet all the time, so I don't get to eat it, so I write it, you know? Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> Wait till you become an old character guy like me, then you don't have to diet. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, why do you think I'm working on my hyphenate? I'm working on my hyphenate, so <laughs> why do you think I'm working for the radio as often as possible? <laughs> I can bloat. Anyway, I love the name Keith Saturday. It's true. Oh, it's fabulous. Your imaginary muse. Right. Thanksgiving for one. It's got an impish, fast-paced, romping quality. Ruben, as an actor, you've worked with Hamish before. Would you describe him that way too? Impish? Fast paced? I don't know if I call him impish, but I, he's adventurous and whimsical and fun and very courageous. The thing uh, I love in, in actors when they're not afraid to to fail or to get out on the limb and the limb breaks. And that's Hamish. He'll get out to try to get the fruit. <laughs> Hamish should get out on the limb so far because he knows that's where the best fruit is. And then the limb breaks. He climbs, he climbs back up in the tree, you know, to get it. Yeah. Jean, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. My God. You know, I've worked with Hamish, too, you know. Mm -hmm. We did Legion together. Oh, right. Right. And he's one of those kind of actors who the second they open their mouth, you go, okay, this person is great. They know what they're doing. It's interesting how you can tell sometimes with an actor. Sometimes you can be wrong, but usually like the first few words they speak, you go, okay, yep. 
Did the turn on a dime switches between Keith Saturday as a playwright, an actor, as your waiter, in any way confuse you or delight you as Ms. Mums? <laughs> oh, as Ms. Mums? Yeah. Well, I think at first she found him uh, a little confusing, <laughs> a, little, a little annoying, you know, but then she started to see him as a worthy adversary and then as a kind of kindred spirit. Yeah. Ruben, how would you describe Hamish's style, in particular in this short play? Well, it's him. It's his voice. You know, it's, it's the way he communicates. It's the way that he rambles on intellectually and emotionally that, <laughs> that smashes together. It smashes together and it makes sense. And that's what's amazing about it, because it seems like it's here and there and everywhere. And then all of a sudden it makes such clear common sense about humanity and relationships and desire and different things, you know. But I have to also say why I'm speaking. Uh, Gene, your range is impeccable. Your emotional and intellectual range is just, I mean, it's just amazing. You're a wonderful, wonderful actor. You want to do a play? (laughs) (laughs) I miss, oh man, I miss doing a play. You know, the problem is <laughs> my own fault. I have a 30-year-old, I also have a 12-year-old. <laughs> so, and theater is not a great schedule when you have kids, as, you know, Hamish knows, because you're gone at night and they don't care if you're gone during the day. You could be working 12 hours a day. They don't care. They're busy. But, you know, at night when you're not there at dinner time, you're not there at bedtime, bath time, storybook time, or just hanging out at homework time, six nights a week, that's rough for them. Yeah, that's been 45 years of my life. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, because what I do is I run home between matinees and I'm home for dinner. My wife, I have earlier dinner before I go to the theater, you know, so we always, we've always committed to having our family dinners, you know, even when I'm on stage. Gene, Hamish, Ruben, you're all veterans of stage, film, and TV. In comparison, how new and or strange is recording a play in solitude remotely from your houses? Well, you know, it's, it's a way of life now, and we, we have to make the adjustment to it, and we're making the adjustment. But I live for the moments to walk in a rehearsal room, oh even God. more than walking to a performance. I live for the moments to walk in and hug my cast. I my know, people. yes, yes, uh, hugging uh, people. <laughs> well, I miss walking into the room in fellowshipping with the other artists. I miss that a lot. But, you know, we're getting used to this new way of life and we we have to make the best art we can. And so it's a pleasure to, you know, Claudia, to to have an opportunity with these these other artists. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Doing like a play reading on Zoom is such a weird thing. But this actually feels organic because it's oral, you know. So this is actually closer to what this form is about. Today's commission essentially started with just its title. Yeah. Can you talk about the journey from just the title to what our audience just heard? Yeah. I mean, I had the title and then I realized I had to write the thing for it. There was a, this character, Miss Moms, was in another play. Uh, she was sort of referred to offstage and I looked up turkey mating on YouTube and I thought, oh, well, that's a play. Um, <laughs> it's it's really neat when you have like a, a tidy, neat idea when you have the idea, but then actually executing it for me is a little bit complicated, but it's a nice rigor that you have to bring to it and discipline for this length of project and the shape of this project. So it was kind of nice to have, well, I've got to write Thanksgiving for one as the assignment. And then hopefully a character comes in and you, you start thinking of, gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if someone as amazing as Jean were saying these lines, what would she say? Oh, she would say that. Oh, well, that would be better. Oh, that would be even better. And so uh, <laughs> like hero actors can sort of carry the flag for you and plant it on a much higher mountain than you thought oh, it was going hey, to. Oh, hey, Mish, I'm so impressed with this. I mean, how long did it take you to write this? Way too long. <laughs> it took a while. It was worth it. Oh, thanks. Oh, <laughs> and also it wasn't, I had the title before the pandemic, before realizing that there were going to be so many people having Thanksgiving oh my for God. one. And wow. so then I was like, oh, well, I, now I'm stuck with this title and this moment. Oh, my hands are so cuffed. 
But then it turned out to be okay. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In contrast to the gloom of eating alone at a franchise steakhouse on Thanksgiving, where are there places that you each relish being alone? You know, I have a, a deck upstairs and I just love to sit there and be alone and listen to the birds and and get a breeze and just sit there and uh, and go in there and get the rosé. <laughs> that sounds yeah. nice. But just to be yeah. there and think, you know, sometimes I'm there working and a lot of times I'm just there thinking and I, I cherish the opportunity that I have in, in having an outdoor space in New York City that is exclusively just yours. Yeah, yeah, sure. I have to say, I grew up an only child with a single mom and so we didn't have like big holidays or we would have to go to somebody's house. But Thanksgiving was always the best holiday because we would go to my friend's family's house and they had like siblings and both parents and stuff like that. And it was a real regular thing. And I really, you know, I like my solitude in general, but this one holiday is like really always been so the idea of Thanksgiving for one is it has always been kind of sad for me, but then it became a nice challenge to try to figure out how we could make it happy. What is it about Thanksgiving, though, that people will go to great, enormous lengths, great trouble and expense and time and to come just to eat this dinner that's the same every year, usually. And it's not that they're really talk about you know the origin of the holiday or usually or things like that but it's this somehow that's this tradition that has become so important to everybody i think the tradition is the gathering of family this yeah. gathering people around this great meal it's like yeah. you know my wife is, is in the kitchen cooking it for days and we can't wait and i know it's torturous to her because she's got to do so many dishes but when it's there and you know we sit around the table and look at each other you know, our family and give thanks. And like you say, Gene, we don't even realize historically, you know, some of the context that Hamish kind of touches on in this play. Well, you know, it's funny. When my daughter was in kindergarten, I volunteered to direct the kindergarten Thanksgiving play. They did the same little script every year. So I had the script and but you would have thought I was directing, you know, a three act play in New York. I just went insane. I think it was a six minute play. And I was making elaborate costumes for the Native Americans and the, the Europeans. And the, I just went insane. And I, I found out stuff that I had no idea. Like the pilgrims wrote about the Native Americans that they met and talked about how beautiful they were. And more importantly, they talked about, and this just killed me. They talked about how their children were taught everything from the time they were really little. They were taught everything, how to cook and sew and hunt and build and everything. But if the kids didn't want to do something, that was fine too. It was like, eh. They said they were so gentle with their children, so loving with their children. And you're thinking you compare this to these people who invaded their land, who were short and white, pasty with bad teeth and beat their <laughs> kids if they didn't pray enough. And, you know, and you're thinking, and look what we did to that culture. Hmm. Sad. Really yeah. sad. Anyway, we thank you, three supremely talented artists, director Ruben Santiago Hudson, Jean Smart. Thank you for and having me. Thank you. Thank you for asking, Hamish. Oh, my God. Thank you for saying yes. Oh, yeah. Ruben, thank you so much. Oh, we get a chance to do more. Yes, that'd be fun. And I have to thank Hamish. And quick, everybody, your favorite Thanksgiving food. Oh, it's got to be uh, mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie. <laughs> Hamish. I like to put all of them onto one forkful. I do it. I oh, do all yes. of them in one big fork. Yeah. Oh, that gravy. sounds good. So my answer is gravy. Mm. Oh yeah, Reuben. My wife sweet potatoes. I love those sweet potatoes. <laughs> oh, buddy, oh. buddy. You're making me so <laughs> hungry. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> well, thank you all. Have a great day and stay safe. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take, take care, so everybody. Take thank care you. of yourselves and happy Thanksgiving, one and all. You've been listening to Playing on Air. Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Associate Producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary Manager, Bonnie Antosh. Literary Assistant, Aditya Pratama. Marketing and Communications Manager, Shelley Horwitz. Theme and Play Music, Tom Cochan. Recording and Sound Design, John Kilgore. Audio Editing, Catherine De La Rosa. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, 
I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening. Thank you.